on cloudy days, there is still a lot of ultraviolet light. And it's interesting to me, my son wears, uh, he wears corrective lenses. He's a little bit nearsighted and we have the type of glasses that will darken and okay. in response to UV light, and on cloudy right. days, his glasses always get dark. So that's right. a good right. indication to right. you how much UV light there is on a cloudy day. Oh, okay, yeah. So you do you recommend those type of glasses for most people? I know, I think, I believe those are the type that have to be prescribed by a um, doctor. You, they don't just change, you know, you, you can't go to um, a store, um, I guess, you wouldn't buy them from the dollar store or anything like that. You have to Correct. have them Those prescribed. Those are prescription glasses, yeah. And really, you don't need those if you don't have a prescription in your glasses. So they're, they're more expensive than a lot of the glasses you can find at the dollar store or at Dick's or someplace like that. So you really mm-hmm. don't need those unless you have a prescription in your glasses, and that's a matter of personal preference. I have a lot of patients who get the glasses that, that will lighten and darken depending on the ambient light or the light that's around you. And then I have people who will just get a pair of prescription sunglasses and have a pair of regular glasses. There's no right or wrong. Either way is fine. It's really a matter of personal preference. Okay. And keep in you. mind, you can get UV protection in clear lenses. You can get um, yes. in clear lenses? Oh, okay, yes. okay. All right, that, I'm I'm sure most people didn't know that because I I think uh, a lot of folks believe that the the uh, sunglasses have to be very dark in order for them uh, to protect their eyes. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a really good point. the The color doesn't matter. So there are lots of different colors. You have black or gray, green, blue, yellow, pink. Those are the main colors. Brown. Some are brown, and as long as they have full UVA, UVB, or 100% UV protection, they're fine. Those different colored lenses allow different uh, wavelengths of visible light to be filtered out. So it does change what you see a little bit, but they can all be 100% UV protection. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good to know. Now, okay, polarized so lenses are a good example. If, if you may have noticed, if you have polarized lenses, that on I have some polarized lenses, and when I go to fill my car with gas, I have to take them off in order to see the LCD pad on the on the pump. So that's an example of where some of the visible light is filtered out. So there are things that you don't see when you have some of those visible light filters in your glasses. Okay, so polarized um, lenses or po- polar- polarized glasses, what, what, what is the purpose of the polarization? So polarization cuts down on the glare. So if you spend a lot of time on the water or if you put on a pair of polarized lenses and look up at the clouds, you'll see they, they, almost, look, they're, they almost look more clear and your depth perception seems to be a little bit better. Think of the polarized lens as cutting down on the background noise. And so it filters out the light that's not helping you see. Mm, Okay. So those will be a a good type of glasses to have or to purchase. So, again, these types of filters are really a matter of personal preference. If you spend a lot of time on the water or – for example, if you're a fisherman and you're trying to look down into the water, the polarized lenses are really helpful. Oh, okay. But they don't change the amount of UV light that's filtered, so it's really a matter of personal preference and what your activity is. Okay. Hmm, great. Great, great, great. So at this point, we're going to I'm going to give out the call in number one more time, and then I'm going to we're going to have a little public service announcement here. Uh, don't have any commercials to play this morning because this topic is so very important, and we wanted to get to all of the um, questions and the information. Uh, but the call in number is once again three four seven nine four five seven four three three. Three four seven nine four five seven four three three. Press one if you have a question or comment, 
and you don't have to do anything if you just want to continue to listen to this show. We will be able to accept one caller today, this morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, so our public service announcement is uh, next Saturday, July the 21st, is our Walk of Healing event, which happens at the Benjamin Banneker Historic Park in Catonsville, Maryland, 300 Oella Avenue, Catonsville, Maryland. We will meet promptly at 1030 in front of the, uh, in front of the museum. And if you would like to attend the Walk of Healing, you can register online at www.partnersinhealth.biz on the Walk of Healing information page. So we want to see everyone that can uh, come out. We Hopefully the weather would be great. And make sure you wear your sunglasses. Okay. <laughs> All right. Exactly. Okay, so you're right. Definitely need those sunglasses. So Dr. Seldon Ridge, um, so we know that we need the sunglasses to protect our eyes from the sun. So can you offer some tips on how to choose sunglasses that will work to protect our eyes? Um, so, you know, we're talking about sunglasses, but I know you have some, some even more some more tips that you can give us. Yes, and I think we've covered a few of them, but I just yes. wanted to emphasize, number one, you want 100% UV protection. So full UVA, UVB, or 100% UV protection. And all glasses should have that label on them. If you pick up a pair of glasses and it does not have a UV protection label on it, put them back. There's, you don't even need to look at those any longer. So you want to make sure you look at the tag and it should be full or 100% UVA, UVB protection. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is that Bigger is better. We touched on that a little bit. So large glasses, wraparound glasses offer you more protection than the small glasses. And as you were talking about before, you may notice if you wear tiny sunglasses, you may still have some discomfort in your eyes because you're getting a lot of light still coming through. So that's your eye telling you again that it's getting UV exposure. And then the third thing is that we talked about color a little bit. Color doesn't matter. You're still looking for that full UVA, UVB protection or 100% protection. And then the last thing I wanted to mention, and this is an important one, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Everybody should be able to get a pair of glasses that protect the eyes. So as long as they have the UV filter, you're fine. They don't have to be fancy and they don't have to be expensive. Okay. Now, I have a have a question yes for instance if we don't purchase our sunglasses from maybe say a cvs or um, a department store or a, a reputable a reputable store suppose we go to the dollar store now i've always been skeptical about this you know they and some of these stores they have the little stick on labels that say UVA but how do we really know if they have you know if they just purchase those sunglasses and they're totally they don't have any UVA protection but they just put those little labels on there I mean I'm always skeptical about that <laughs> well you raise an interesting point my my late chairman always used to say trust but verify <laughs> so I think if there's any question, then what you probably want to do is look the company up online. See if you can get any information. And if you're not sure, then just move on to another pair. But you're right. In the end, you are relying on uh, the the company to uh, be honest about what's in their product. So, you know, you would hope that they are doing that. But if you're not sure, then you can always go to go to Google and look it up or whatever your your uh, browser is and and see if you can find any information on the company. That would be my best recommendation. Hmm. And I think I would prefer to purchase my sunglasses from uh, going forward (laughs) and and, uh, recommending to other people that, you know, in, in some cases it is better to purchase your uh, your sunglasses from a company that you know or, you know, a store that you, you pretty much would stand by, whatever they they sell. If it's, it has UVA on there, UVA, UVB protection, that, um, that that would mean that, you know, that's 
that's what it is. Um, so I I really don't think I'm going to purchase any sunglasses anymore from the dollar store. <laughs> well, it, it is an important thing, but again, I, I would hope that if they're labeled full UV protection, that they would in fact have that in them. Uh, but but again, you can always do a little bit of research if to just to achieve that added level of security. Okay, okay. So, Dr. Seldom Ridge, um, um, what else can list? can our listeners do to keep their eyes uh, healthy overall? Um, what about uh, eye exams, regular eye exams? Is uh, What do you recommend? I'm to, glad uh, you brought that do? up. Yes. So everyone should have an eye exam at 40. The American Academy of Ophthalmology recommends that even if you don't have any known eye disease or you don't feel like you have a problem, you should get a baseline exam at age 40. And then your ophthalmologist can determine your, between your family history and your risk factors for eye disease and your physical exam, in other words, what they see in your eye, they can then determine when you should follow up again. If you have no family history of eye disease and you have a completely normal exam, they may say come back in five years. If you have uh, a known history of glaucoma, they'll say probably come back in a year. If you look suspicious for glaucoma, they may bring you back right away to do some testing so that they can better determine your risk for developing glaucoma. So it really depends on your family history, number one. History is always really important. And then the second thing is what they find on the eye exam. So 40 is, 40 is the age where we want everyone to get a baseline exam if you haven't had one already. Okay. And okay. The, the eye is an incredible thing. That's about the time most people start to have difficulty <laughs> reading. So right. Then, and that's the, the eye oh, telling you, okay, reading glasses. <laughs> right. It's time to get your eye checked, yes. All right. What's wrong with my eyes? I don't see as, as well as I used to. So exactly. tell, us we're, <laughs> tell us we're almost out of time, but can you tell us, uh, um, I didn't get a chance to talk about the American, American Academy of Ophthalmology. It is the world's largest association of eye physicians and surgeons, a global community of 32,000 medical doctors who protect sight and empower lives by setting the standards of ophthalmic education and advocating for patients and the public. Um, so can you tell us a little more about the academy and, um, and what you do and uh, how you help other people and how people can get in contact with your organization? Yes, the Academy is a wonderful organization. We have hundreds and hundreds of ophthalmologist volunteers. We have an incredible patient education website. It's called iSmart. You can get there at iSmart.org, or you can also get there from the homepage of the American Academy of Ophthalmology. That's AAO.org. And you can find information on many, many different types of eye diseases. And on that website, there is an Ask an Ophthalmologist function. So if you have questions about your specific situation, you can write in and ask an ophthalmologist. And there's also some contact information on that website. So um, I, I recommend anyone who has questions or is looking for more information, go to iSmart.org. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so... Um, we are about one minute, 58 seconds <laughs> down to the <laughs> wire. Do you have, Dr. Seldom Ridge, do you have any closing remarks that you would like to express to our listeners? Yes, just a couple of things. Uh, you asked what else we can do to keep our eyes healthy. There are some basic things you can do in your life that will reduce your long-term risk of eye disease. Number one, if you are a smoker, you need to stop. Number two, if you don't mm. smoke, don't start because right. smoking is a risk factor for multiple eye diseases. And then the other thing is that you want to think of your eye like your heart. You want to eat a, what I like to call a heart-healthy diet. So eat lots of green leafy vegetables. You want lots of naturally occurring antioxidants in your diet. So fruits and vegetables. You want to eat a lot of fish and seafood because those have healthy oils in them. 
and get regular exercise. So the things that are good for your heart and your brain, for that matter, are also good for your eye. And then the other thing is that you want to practice good hygiene, particularly if you're a contact lens wearer. Always follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Hmm. Wonderful Yes, advice. and then I wanted to just uh, emphasize one more time that we recommend everybody protect their eyes when they are outside in the sun. So full UV 